Mm. I'm going to be very brief because um, I just need to touch on this and then we'll pray. We have stayed in his presence and um, we trust God for grace. But I sincerely pray that the brief session that we'll have together will be a most impactful time. In the name of Jesus. Micah chapter 4. I'm teaching on what I call dominion systems. Dominion system of the house of the Lord. It says it shall be established in the top of the mountains. Just use your imagination to try to comprehend what this is saying. There is no physical sense in this prophecy. That the mountain will be exalted above other mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. And people shall flow to it. And then verse 2 says, please give us verse 2. And many nations, many nations, not a few, shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. I can preach all night here. Notice it says the house of the God of Jacob. To understand this scripture, you have to study Jacob. And what made God to call himself the God of Jacob? Because the God of Jacob is the God that gives men encounters. And he says, let us go to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he says, many things will happen when we get there. Number one is that he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. He says, for... The law shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is a prophetic picture of the season of dominion of the church. Now, as you know, every time the Bible talks of mountains, it begins to talk of spheres of influence. It doesn't necessarily mean literal mountains. Are we together now? Uh, for instance, um, um, the Bible says that Satan took Jesus up to an exceeding high mountain. And from that mountain, he showed him the glories of the whole world. There is no mountain you stand upon that you can see the glory of the world. It was not just a physical location. He took him to the epicenter where the entire wealth and estate is a spiritual location. And from that standpoint, he saw the glory of the whole world. And it says, if you bow to me, I will grant you access to this. For it has been given to me, he boldly said. And Jesus never said you are lying. Are we together now? Because you know that the earth was handed over and the dominion and the authority was given to Satan. From Adam. And one of the, the, the redemption agenda much more than granting us access to the life of god was a restoration of dominion maybe let me just steal out two minutes to really tell us how satan became the god of this world it's a technology in the spirit and i pray that as little as it sounds god will guide us grace to understand there is a spiritual system by which you transfer ownership and responsibility it's a subtle system that we continue to use every day. And I will tell you what happened. Man and his wife now default from the laws of God. And then the Bible tells us that they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden. You just leave that scripture up. And then he called on Adam. Notice the protocol that God never called on Eve. Are we together now? Because the, the organogram of authority was god and then man the male and then the woman his wife then creation are we together now and so when he came to the garden he called man he said adam please follow me he said where art thou and adam said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked and then he says who told you 
you have opened up your ears to the influence of another voice that has supplied you an information outside of what i gave you notice how adam transferred dominion first to the woman he didn't get to satan first it went to the woman and then to satan and here's how he transferred it the woman you gave me this woman is responsible from that time god did not speak to adam again he went to the woman and said woman now that the man transferred responsibility by complaining and giving excuses he says what is this that you have done and watch how the woman transfers responsibility to satan he says the serpent satan remained the god of this world because he didn't blame anybody he kept quiet had he blamed another entity the power would transfer to him listen carefully so when jesus came and was standing before pontius pilate they asked him questions and he kept quiet and they said can't you talk it was a mystery who will he blame who is greater than him to blame and transfer responsibility so he kept quiet that silence is also a system of dominion there is a language that only silence can speak please sit down I just thought to interject this to grant us grace to understand so when we say satan is the god of this world it is not there is no superstition as to how the dominion came hmm. he became the god of this world held the keys and when jesus came through his silence being led like a sheep to the slaughter his silence was also a system of dominion I hope you know that silence is also a voice and there is a language that silence speaks you must learn to hear the voice of silence so when god is silent he is speaking you have just not been trained to know what he's saying when god is silent he's saying i'm preparing a table before you hmm. praise the lord let's get back to our discussion the bible says that a time will come in the church age when the church will ascend and command a level and a dimension of influence and the bible says as a result the nations is not just talking of physical countries it's talking of spheres of influence stratas of human activities please listen this is the core of the understanding of kingdom advance because i think for a very long time the body of christ um we love the lord but we have not understood the systems that make for kingdom advance are we together and so as a result we continue to do well as far as our spiritual growth and maturity is concerned but we have not sustained the intelligence nor the strategy to cause god and his value system to be institutionalized within a territory the key to kingdom advance before i define it for you and we continue the key to kingdom advance is twofold we have focused on one and ignored the other there are two keys to kingdom advance the first is called evangelism the second is called influence none of the two will sufficiently replace the other evangelism deals with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men influence talks of establishing the lordship and the value system of christ across every strata of human activities the church will be in trouble if we do not focus on our territory and if we do not institutionalize christ and so dominion is a strategy that was outsourced by the intelligence of god to cause the influence of the church to become palpable are we together now and micah prophesies it that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted and shall be above other mountains and then he says that it shall also be exalted above other hills and from that standpoint the bible says the nations shall flow through it they will say come notice that a time will come we'll stop inviting them our results will continue the invitation 
the bible says that the nations will advise themselves and say come let us go to the mountain of the lord let us go to the god of jacob he will teach us of his ways and he says out of zion will come the law it was isaiah in chapter 60 that he was also buttressing on this prophecy and he said arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you and then he says for darkness this is not an information it's prophecy for darkness shall cover the earth is the same hebrew word used in genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to who abohu confusion disarray for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people and then he says but upon you the glory of the lord shall rise verse 3 is a prophecy someone should receive it says gentiles shall come gentiles shall come gentiles shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising then the bible begins to speak that your gates will be continually open that it will not be short day or night that you will receive the forces of the gentiles he says where thou has been deserted so that no man will pass through you i will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations people of god were in that era where the church will no longer be perceived as a nuisance and an interruption to civilization until now when you mention the word pastor or church it looks like an individual who is a manipulator and an interruption to civilization so you either choose god or you choose wisdom i don't know where that education came from the world view of the church is very pungent and ugly they look at the church as a place where victims and weak people go to find consolation and that is true but the context is not true that the church is is a is a final reservoir of people who are not determined to make it in life they've lost in everything in life and then they go there to be manipulated by a man who continues to console them until death that is not the picture of the bride of christ he says the mountain of the lord's house exalted at the top of all other mountains that it becomes the epicenter of the attraction of the earth that the nations will say let us go let us go let us go kingdom advance therefore i define it i define kingdom advancement as every scriptural strategy that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activity this is what i define as kingdom advance that means whatever we do if it does not culminate in establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and institutionalizing the value system of the kingdom across every strata of human activities we are not advancing the kingdom this is the universal object that must coordinate everything we do from business to politics to um whatever it is that we have been we are we have been pre-informed that we are there as witnesses we are advocating the cause of the kingdom that is the proper understanding upon which the teaching of dominion falls in place because if dominion is taught as a standalone teaching as important as it is uh, sometimes if not managed well it will only try to stimulate the lust of people who want to be successful but don't want to be serious with god so the goal must be there that it is a system that helps us to establish the lordship of christ if you're with me please say amen, amen. and yesterday i shared with us how that the kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities and that there are dimensions in god and dimensions spiritual allocations that he has kept that when the saints walk into these dimensions then experientially we will have walked in the victory and the dominion that was reserved for us are we together and there are laws and systems 
please you will want to get my teaching yesterday where i taught on different dimensions and levels of accessing the power of god and uh, i'll just talk on two or three areas and systems of dominion number one blessed be the name of the lord number one the first dominion the system of dominion allocated for the victory of the saints is the mystery of prayer hmm. prayer prayer is not just a system to grant access to petitions it is a secret formula that was given to the saints a system by which we manipulate possibilities from the realm of the spirit prayer is predicated upon an understanding that the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm are we still together the bible says in hebrews 11 when you read it's talking about faith it says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god it says so that the things that appear paraphrase it now that they came from the things that did not appear the realm of the spirit is the mother of the physical realm the physical realm is a child that came from a womb of the realm of the spirit that means that everything happens twice it first happens in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests in the physical was it not the book of job that granted us access to see how things happen that a discussion was happening in the heavenlies about a man's destiny and that man was on earth not knowing what would happen and he only became a victim of that catastrophe so in luke chapter 18 the bible says and he spake a parable unto them to the end that men 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 not pastors men ought always to pray and not faint men ought always to pray and not faint as a system we can look through scripture and see the ministry of this deep mystery of prayer and how that the saints through the ministry of prayer commanded levels and dimensions of dominion within their time and dispensation everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer prayer is very powerful prayer is many things among them these prayer is the highest sign of humility Prayer is proof of your recognition that you are inadequate without the support and the help of heaven. A prayerless Christian is an arrogant Christian. He's not just a backslider. Prayerlessness is proof of pride. It's an indoctrination that you may have subconsciously given yourself that you are sufficient without him. And the Bible says, for without me, ye can do nothing. Are we together? prayer is a great sign of humility that when we bow our knees to the father of our lord jesus christ and make petitions and begin to legislate that's the second revelation of prayer prayer is a spiritual system of legislation we enforce mysteries in the realm of the spirit and cause their manifestation through the ministry of prayer james chapter 5 holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god I didn't write this song it was in the place of prayer that i had the angel singing this song exactly as i'm singing it to you prayer is a system of access you penetrate beyond the realms of the three-dimensional realm to access the mind of christ the bible says no man knows the spirit of a man the heart of a man save the spirit that is in that man so it's a system that grants us access to buy into the mind of the spirit and know what is the will of God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he. Who comes 
in the name of our God. Now, the way the Bible teaches us to know God is by personifying individuals that represent the thoughts of God on a subject matter. Are we together now? It is usually in the character of God and we see this even in, in the Gospels and, and the Epistles that when God is discussing a subject matter, usually he would buttress on his point if he is not using parables he would find a man that personifies his thoughts so that we can understudy him. So when it comes to the portrait of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom he looks for abraham and he says look up to abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him when god is teaching us the systems that can cause a man to thrive he will pick isaac and show us that isaac sowed in that land and received that same year not another year meaning the year you sow is the year you should reap Oh, just sit down. I'm not, I'm not teaching finance here. But it's true. Agriculture is open enough to teach us that it's possible to sow and reap that same year. And it says an hundredfold. When the Bible is teaching us on encounters, it will pick a man called Jacob in chapter 28 and chapter 32 and show us the dimensions of encounter where Jacob would meet with this deity in the night having dispersed his wives his cattle and all of that then a man comes to him and the man says leave me for the day breaketh and he said i will not let you go until you bless me and he showed us how god blesses men by doing something to their names he says what is your name that's where the problem is what identity do you carry in the spirit he says i am jacob he says thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed he touched his tie a symbol of human strength so that that limping position will keep him dependent on god forever that's how god blesses by taking away your human strength and making you ever vulnerable dependent on his power he calls it a blessing not a cause god blesses men by touching their point of human strength the factor in you that makes god unnecessary when he takes it away he blessed you Is God blessing us this morning? And so the Bible is teaching on prayer. And then we're about to see a personality that personifies it. I'm hurrying up this morning. There's so much to talk about, but we have to jump. So James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let's start from 13, then we jump to 16 for time's sake. James chapter 5, please, and verse 13. The Bible says, is anyone afflicted? media please help us is any among you afflicted the remedy affliction means do you sense an unusual occurrence and a programming in your life and territory because this earth works by seed time and harvest so when you get a harvest for a seed you did not sow it means someone is there sowing it for you because men are not the only farmers while men slept that individuals can come and sow seed so you are reaping a harvest from a seed you did not sow and the bible says are you afflicted not just body I didn't bargain for this infirmity i didn't bargain for my child to fail exams i didn't serve any other god why am i seeing the results of the hidden captured in my family it says if any man afflicted the system of diagnosis is let him pray are we blessed not let him discuss not let him complain not him, let him roll around and say ah dear nigeria he says is any man afflicted do you see any outcome in your life that is not supposed to be based on your dealings with god it's a sign that an individual who has masqueraded as a farmer he has sown a seed let him pray let him pray verse 16 then the bible tells us what prayer can do personified in a prophet called elijah 16 please is that 16 it says confess your faults to one another okay the b part now the effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much next verse please 
haven't told you that when your prayer is effectual it can produce tremendous power dynamic in his workings amplified says then 17 now says elijah was a man of like passion that means he was human in every sense but his secret was that he prayed earnestly shabakatoskia prayer can open heavens prayer can close heavens you need one of the two if your heavens are closed prayer can open it if your heavens are open prayer can keep it open whether your heavens are closed or open it will take prayer to sustain or change the result elijah prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again if you prayed for the child to come you pray for the child to prosper you pray for the child to marry well you pray for your grandchildren to serve god just because you prayed yesterday does not mean it's sufficient no there are vials in heaven where the prayers of the saints are stored and the bible tells us that the prayers can rise up as a memorial and the lifting of our hands like an evening sacrifice he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit so it's not only the heavens he closed he closed the earth too if the heavens are closed the earth is automatically closed the fruits did not come from heaven the fruit came from the earth but because the rain didn't come from the heaven the fruits did not come out so you can close the earth by closing the heavens you can close a man's job by closing the heavens over him you can close a man's business is located on the earth but you close the heavens over him don't close his shop open the shop but close the heavens and the business is still closed hello him madonna hello him madonna hello him madonna listen down one time when they caught apostle peter they beheaded james and it pleased the people that herod had beheaded james and so they caught peter do you know why notice oh dear oh dear oh dear do you know that there were certain things about god only peter james and john knew there was something that happened in the mount of transfiguration with two of them that the rest did not see they were the threefold cord that could not be easily broken and so satan started picking them one by one he wanted to kill three of them immediately he could deal with the rest later on but there was an information captured that must not be released to the church so james was beheaded next online was peter and the church said no way mm -mm. we understand the system of dominion we may not be in government but we are in power and the bible says the church began to pray and when the church prayed peter's angel governed by prayer the angel came and took him out for peter it was as though he was in a vision and then he released him when he went they knocked and they opened and they saw peter and jammed the door they thought it was his angel a fervent and effectual prayer let me tell you something you are really serious in the realm of the spirit when you begin to pray the devil will let you know your prayer is touching him there are many people whose lives are so inert it looks like you are not being attacked you think you have faith it's just because you are not striking any chord in the realm of the spirit you are not a threat whatsoever so the devil just lets you be but there is a night you can stay and pray and you pray in a way and a manner that by the next day someone will call you and say be careful you say ah be careful how many of you have seen the agitations that happen even from your loved ones when you are done praying it's not their fault it's the controlling spirits that are responding to the agitation that the prayer brings so you are done praying 
and immediately everybody wants to annoy you and are being annoyed by you sometimes it can be your husband or your wife just because of a cup of water a heated argument can come the cup is only a scapegoat the realm of the spirit is responding reaction a reaction that is coming from the prayers of the saints men ought always to pray and not to faint the bible tells us that babylon was governed by strange spirits the spirits of the medicine and the passions these were these were diabolic operations that used the constellations to manipulate territories and then there was a man who was in government called daniel he was a threat his prayer was a threat and the devil used the influence of the parliament to give a decree that for only 30 days look at what 30 days of prayerlessness allows the devil do 30 days only a decree that for 30 days nobody should pray 30 days of prayerlessness is enough is how we walk in power by prayer i believe and i'm convinced that one of the way you register your presence and your dominion in the realm of the spirit is through the ministry of prayer you don't come out on stage and just tell someone be healed be blessed oh you are the lion of the tribe of judah the realm of the spirit will say jesus we know paul we know Apostle Achudume and his wife, we know. He said, who are you? There is no incense. There is no track record of a ministry of prayer. One of the systems of dominion is dominion through prayer. Dominion to prayer. Number two, please, let's hurry up. Are we blessed this morning? The second dominion system allocated for the victory of the saints is called productivity dominion system number two productivity as good as i spoke about prayer many people in the body of christ are prayerful but do not have the requisite level of influence productivity one of the mainstream teachings in the body of Christ is for people to be valuable. I agree, but value does not reward. It is productivity that rewards. Value just makes you is worthy of commendation, but not worthy of reward. Being valuable talks of potentials until that value is converted into products and services that are needed and useful, served with excellence. That is what commands rewards. There is a dimension of the dominion of the saints that will have to come when we obey the command be fruitful it's not a suggestion be fruitful there are spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance and influence and so on and so forth but let me tell you this an unproductive christian is not even a blessing even to god matthew 25 he gives unto three men the bible says five talent two and one and he says according to their several ability the end of that parable justifies that he was fair one who had five talent multiplied it the bible says then the one with two multiplied it and the one with one he came and met him and said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought to just keep your talent here it is and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant productivity 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 john chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit he says so shall ye be my disciples that means you validate my mentorship upon your life when you are productive the saints need to be productive it's one of the reasons why the church is looked at as a nuisance to civilization because there are yet to be men and women who can translate the reality of the wisdom the anointing the power the grace that has been invested from the realm of the spirit to serve the purposes of men within a territory and with all due respect this also goes to us preachers because we have to be careful a lot of preachers are seen as a nuisance 
and manipulators of men because we have not shown ourselves to be productive even beyond the pulpit the pulpit is only a minute aspect of ministry our productivity must justify the honor that is given to us that as a man of god you should sustain an ability to be able to talk and communicate with people from all walks of life and still be able to speak to them you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to yourself every church and every congregation is made up of experts educationists and um, lecturers and all of that captains of industry business people and i mean a pastor must be sound to not insult the pedigree of people in the name of preaching you must bring truths that are useful applicable time tested and then anointed be fruitful i made up my mind as a man of god that by the grace of god nobody will ever insult the grace of god upon my life simply because of lack of productivity now there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the educated look for you there are things when you have only the enlightened look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek you all men all men regardless of territory regardless of expertise prophesy to someone say be fruitful be fruitful say productivity do you like what i'm teaching productivity is very powerful it's not just about money it is a measure of your usefulness to civilization it's a measure of your usability you know how productive you are by how people miss you when you are not there if your presence and your absence causes the same effect you are not a blessing i have the privilege of talking to very very blessed people and they tell me that it is true that there might not be so much jobs in nigeria but the truth is that there are many young graduates that are not employable they are educated but not very valuable I know a gentleman who works he stays i think in kaduna and he works in lagos he does three jobs and the minimum of the salary he receives is five hundred thousand. you've heard me humorously say it in one of the corporations he works for if he coughs they will buy him a pharmacy not a drug because he is he is really the brain behind the results there that god will cause you to be as valuable as gold look at how men stay in a filling station you are going to pay but you are still saying thank you that's how valuable oil is when the saints become like that then the gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising i hate mediocrity and i hate it with a passion it is responsible for the servitude of africa and we must trust god for enlightenment to be to know that spirituality and productivity are not choices that you choose one against the other no say productivity number three I apologize that i'm not dealing with the points in details i'm just just to help us um number three you want to work in dominion the third dominion system is wealth wealth w-e-a-l-t-h there is no dominion in poverty I wish i'm not the one who is teaching this now but you have to listen because it is true hello madonna let me show you two scary verses i'm surprised they are in the bible these verses will make you respect god in an unusual way proverbs 22 please we'll read verse 2 and then we'll read verse 7 remember that all scripture is inspired of the holy ghost it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness that the man of god may be mature proverbs chapter 22 and verse 2 if you're a christian please read with me one to read the rich and the poor meet together colored 
the lord is the maker of them all stop there look at this insulting statement couldn't you just say human beings inhabitants are on the earth god is god over them i mean what is the what is responsible for this insultive stratification the rich and the poor he never said the rich christian or the poor christian the rich anything and the poor anything meet together in the same territory like a classroom hear me he says god is the maker of them all not the maker of them so he never makes them so he made them as human beings they classified themselves into different dimensions so whether you choose to be lazarus or abraham god made you so he made you lazarus made heaven abraham made heaven the difference is the quality of their impact on earth there is nothing that is tied to lazarus but god names his name he decides to route through abraham even for salvation to come to people in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 he says if ye be abraham's seed then are ye heirs according to the promise Abraham verse 7 of the same Proverbs 22 please let's rush but you have to listen to what I'm saying now this verse oh dear this is the verse that in the name of Jesus Christ may your eyes be open to understand what it says this is not just about prosperity this is a, this is this is warfare right there it's not about money read with me please one to read the rich rule it over the poor uh -huh. and the borrower is servant to the lender hold on that means there are two ways to make you a slave and a servant two ways if i want you to be a slave i make you poor and if i want you to be a servant listen carefully i make you a borrower You don't subjugate people by subjugating them. You manipulate the economy around them and they fall into servitude. The Bible says the rich will rule over the poor. That means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. Are we together now? The rich will rule over the poor and the borrower. If you decide to replace poor, and put your name or your family and your nation it still holds true the rich so it's not just about prosperity and cars and houses it's a battle for influence it's a battle for the lordship of christ it's a battle for your soul i told you the ultimate commodity for exchange in this kingdom is your soul not just your money not just your products and services satan wants your soul and he can use everything to get your soul what shall it profit a man hear jesus the businessman speaking if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so transaction can be done with the soul you can gain and you can lose and the commodity is your soul are we together the next verse please ecclesiastes chapter 9 very interesting story that blessed me three verses we'll start from verse 13 ecclesiastes chapter 9 please this wisdom have i also seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom one two please let's read together there was a little city uh-huh and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it next verse now now there was found in it a poor wise man stop this is a story the bible is giving us what a paradox that the man is poor and yet wise poverty and wisdom does not go hand in hand but here is a situation we have a man who is poor and wise and the bible says he by his wisdom did what 
delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man next verse then said i we're still reading wisdom is better than strength uh-huh nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard so the bible says it is not enough to have a message you must have the resources to cause that message to be heard that a man's wisdom delivered a city yet the influence to preserve the honor that came with listen listen let me tell you this i hope you know prosperity played a role in salvation that jesus is hanging on that tree sir and no prayer warrior could bring that dead body from the cross no angel could bring the dead body of the living christ on the cross it took a man of influence and prosperity called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and spoke to the king and offered his virgin tomb and jesus was buried it took prosperity and influence for salvation to come if you look at prosperity just as some money mongering agenda of some lost driven christians here and there i know there are people that approach it that way and that is incorrect you see that but this is a battle for your soul it's a battle for our children and our children's children is the battle for the continuity of god's program within a territory it doesn't matter what our message is let me tell you the gospel is heavy it takes wealth as the ark bearers to lift it you must understand this there are certain levels of economic empowerment if you do not have you will never hear certain instructions from god god searches around egypt he wants to save his people from a famine that is coming and checks every jew and nobody even jacob is qualified to see that dream so he goes to a man of influence called pharaoh and gives pharaoh the dream because only pharaoh had what it would take to make the dream come to pass there are certain levels of influence and prosperity if you do not have it's a waste for god to reveal certain things he can't tell you to build the school because it's number one you will not believe it and number two you will let other children die because of poverty so he will revelations will keep moving around abel kuta looking for men who both love god and have the empowerment it will pass your house you love god you have qualified but you fail the test because you've ignored the place of finance hallelujah hmm. i will never pastor a people who love god and are mediocre i have seen the disaster that mediocrity brings it will make you compromise on your values because whoever feeds you guides your convictions you only have a choice when you detach yourself from the influence of pharaoh if you are in egypt you must serve the god of pharaoh was it not hunger that took god's people to egypt what else took them to egypt it was hunger so when satan wants you to go to egypt he doesn't say go to egypt he will cause that there is no bread and then hunger will take even a covenant family to egypt hunger will take a man of god who started well to egypt hunger will take a man of integrity to egypt hunger will take a politician who vowed that he will stand for truth to egypt it's not about prosperity it's about your soul let me tell you how you know is satan prospering you you prosper but not even as your soul prospers two of them cannot go hand in hand satan will never allow your soul and your pockets to prosper it's impossible but when god comes he will cause both your pocket and your soul so he says you prosper even as your soul that the more i prosper the more i know god and the more that money means nothing to me that it does not sustain the ability to take the place of god in my life you are frustrated satan if you have both money and passion for god you have destroyed satan yeah. 
think how frustrating it is when a man comes to your company with a product more superior than what you are selling you have no advantage you stand helpless that's what god wants the church to become for as long as we continue to beg around and beg the heathen then they will give us supplies but at the expense of our soul there is a fraternity that is happening with babylon and hunger is the motivation behind it so our sermons are coordinated by the hunger that is in our belly our fraternity with men and women who are very vocal about their displeasure about the kingdom advancement but we will hate them for a while and hunger will force reconciliation but there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain 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 please sit down where money will no longer be the basis of giving your son or your daughter in marriage but the will of god and purpose many people have poverty has made people to miss their life partners the lady knew that this guy was the will of god you don't like me now we can reconcile after service listen let me tell you sincerely make a vow with your destiny today that you will never you see you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your convictions and your decisions so i i understand what happened i understand the background but don't let men speak to you and say can anything good come out of nazareth let me tell you this chasing money all your life is a cause you will never have the time to serve the purposes of, the, of god we need to be delivered from that cause it's a cause your lifetime is too short to chase finances so god must raise men and women in this season who can access the provisions of
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.